Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carve. So today I am gonna look at Dremel speeds. And I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, what should I run my Dremel at? So generally I run it around about 30,000 RPM. Um, might go up to 35, but anywhere in between that. It's kind of like full speed. But there's gonna be three circumstances that I'm gonna be lowering the speed of the Dremel. Tip number one, lower the speed when you're using a larger Dremel bit. Why do I need to lower the speed of the Dremel when I'm using a larger bit? Okay, so generally when you're using, say, a Katzel flame burr, you're gonna be using that at full speed. But say if you've got larger burrs like this Katzel rotor burr, the diameter will be different. So we've got the Katzel diameter which is quite small and the rotor burr which the diameter is quite large. So the outside has got to go faster per RPM. So essentially when you're using these bigger ones it's going to burn the wood faster. Generally as a general rule is the faster the burr is going the more lightly it's going to burn the wood and also the harder the wood is the more lightly it's going to burn as well. Okay so let's have a look at an example I'm using a flap sander here it's got a large diameter carving at full speed here and it's going to burn the wood um, yeah so listen to the RPMs on this it's going to be noisy so uh, be aware of that. So you can really see that wood burning and there are a couple of other reasons why it's going to be burning. Um, where I am at the end of the boat is uh, end grain so that tends to burn more than cross grain which I'm doing there. Uh, but also it's also got to do a lot with the pressure so it's sort of like a combination of speed and pressure when it comes to trying to mitigate how much burning there's going to be and it's really no hard and fast rule you've got to play around with it but sort of like say if you're getting burning just to like lower back that speed a little bit and maybe go a little bit lighter and see if that takes out the burns and if it doesn't take out the burns get a sort of coarser burr take out the burns and then go in and sand it back at a lower speed so you don't get those burns in the first place okay so but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in a burn and then I'm going to use a coarser burn just like I explained to get rid of that burn. So here we go, we're putting in the burn right here. So that is quite a deep burn and it's going to be quite hard to get rid of with that burn. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap over to a coarser burr so, and then take the wood back and then go back in with the sanding burr and smooth it out. So you can sort of see that I am using the coarser burr there and I'm actually going around the burn at the moment and then I will sort of just take back the whole area. Um, yeah, so you can sort of see it coming out there and I'm just doing really light touches and I've also decreased the speed of this burr. I know this is kind of going off topic but uh, I think it's kind of fun to know these kind of things and it works. I'm just using this as an example but it will work with most things. So say if you burnt um, the part of uh, like going into the eye or something on a wood spirit, uh, go with a coarser burr, go really carefully so you don't sort of like alter the anatomy of the eye and just take it back a bit and then go in with a smoother burr and go lighter. Okay, so tip number two is uh, kind of like an extension of tip number one, but it has got to do with the smaller burrs, sort of like the regular burrs that we kind of always use, sort of like that kind of size, like your Katzel flame burr and all of those ones. Generally, uh, you're going to suffer burning if you're carving really hard woods. So when you're carving softer woods, which is really good for beginners, uh, you're not going to get too much burning. But whereas you go into the harder woods like this oak, uh, you could suffer a little bit more burning. Now we're carving end grain here that has a more likelihood of burning just because it seems to be harder at the end. And it's sort of like all the little fibers stick out and are really packed really tight. Uh, what 
you can tend to do is uh, just go lighter as well as lower the speed and also uh, don't just because it's burning it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad um, it's only bad when it comes to finishing and you don't want those burnt look burnt kind of parts there so you can actually use burning in eyes on certain things uh, and also sort of like when you're blocking out a carving you could suffer um, you could just suffer the burning and then sort of like bring back to a non-burnt kind of stage at the end of the sort of blocking out when you're putting in the details and for beginners when I say blocking out I just mean, sort of mean sort of like when you've got a block like that and say let's say you were carving a wood spirit in it so that the blocking out is just putting in the major parts so sort of like carving the shape of the nose and all of that and then you would sort of refine that blocked out aspect of it into smaller details. And the third and final time that I would be lowering the speed of the Dremel is when I want really good control. So this is sort of like when you're going in for real details and the eyes and all of that kind of stuff. There's a few things that I do. I will lower the Dremel speed which will in fact sort of like make sort of the touches not take so much kind of wood off. And then I would only touch the wood very very lightly as well. So essentially I'm sort of like sketching the details in, in a very, sort of like, it takes a long time. So, but you don't want to sort of like go full speed and extremely go in fast because that's when you're going to make mistakes. And I've talked a little bit about noses in this video. So why don't you check out my how to carve, 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 a, carve a nose video, which I've sort of broken down into sort of like proportions and where to start and also how it sits on the face which I think is very very important when it comes to carving faces so check that out and hey thanks for watching and we will see you next time